It's that time of year when I indulge in the annual guessing game. You know, the cards come through the door and I look at the handwriting or the postmark trying to work out where they have come from and who might be getting in touch. The fear is, whoever it is, it is not on our list and they've been overlooked. Or there are those who have just fallen silent and we don't know why. Are they dead? Or have they got a major problem that we know nothing about? And so we ask ourselves the question, whatever happened to, followed by somebody's name? Well, there are several characters in the Christmas story that I wonder whatever happened to. The main one is Joseph. But there are others that get me wondering, like the shepherds, the innkeeper, the magi. As far as Joseph is concerned, not a lot is known, really. Well, certainly he's identified as a carpenter from Nazareth who is pledged to marry Mary. Matthew and Luke give genealogies, but they don't match up, so it seems. Plainly, they've not got, who do you think you are, genealogists working for them. Though, of course, the oral tradition holds a surprising amount of memories even today. It's not until much later the tradition about Joseph is established, and it's mostly through the Coptic and Arabic sources of the 5th and 6th century. Joseph, the carpenter from Nazareth, features at the birth of Jesus, being encountered by an angel, registering in Bethlehem, and escaping to Egypt with Mary and Jesus after another dream, another angelic encounter to escape Herod. Other information is scarce and we will never know with any degree of certainty what happened to him. Yet I would have thought that his life was radically changed by his experience. He has been chosen as much as Mary to enable the child of Bethlehem to become known as the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Yet, despite all the attention to Joseph, it is in fact to Mary that tradition turns and upon whom the light is shone. There are others in the Christmas story, like shepherds. They too, well, they were encountered by angels, a great company of them, who told of a birth and sang glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. After the events of that night, they become anonymous in the Gospel. But I suspect they would not be anonymous in the areas of Bethlehem where they lived. They had a story to tell and I'm sure they told it to anyone who would listen. Their journey to the manger is recorded in Luke's Gospel. I wonder if years later any of them had heard about the man from Nazareth who was changing lives and whether they were able to connect the dots. We've no idea how many magi there were, but they returned home to their distant land, content that they have fulfilled their prophetic role through the presentation of gifts to the child, the king of the Jews. Ironic, that, is the phrase that Pilate uses and is put above the cross that Jesus hangs upon. Well, we know nothing further about them, but there are various legends and traditions that have grown up around them. The only biblical information we have is set out in Matthew's second chapter, the first 18 verses. That's all there is. Whatever happened to the Magi? Well, there are many characters who feature with small roles in the Christmas events as they are recorded in Matthew and Luke's Gospel. From an innkeeper to a priest, soldiers to a king. And we don't have answers to what had happened to very many of them, except the king. We, too, 
have many peachy people who feature in our lives, about whom we may ask, I may wonder, whatever happened to them? And we haven't a clue, really. Maybe this coming year we ought to try and re-establish a contact. There is, of course, one with whom we must be able to stay in contact. He was born in a small Jewish town, Bethlehem. He grew up in Nazareth, ministered to thousands through preaching, teaching and healing, was prepared to give up life itself, that we should be in contact with his father. In the moment of his death, he found a new life to which he invites us. Whatever happened to Jesus? Well, he became the gateway to life eternal with God and staying in contact with us every day. The child of Bethlehem receives the adoration of lowly shepherds and the splendour of the Magi with their gifts. The child of Bethlehem receives our adoration and worship now, here, where we are. Whatever happened to Jesus, he became our saviour, whoever we are. That's what. I wonder as I wander out under the sky, how Jesus the Saviour did.